This is the sixth video on the use of MATLAB in control contexts and we're going to look at closed loop offsets. The previous videos have shown how to compute closed loop transfer functions and display step responses or compute step responses. This video is going to use those results so make sure first of all you're familiar with the earlier videos before you go on um, with this one. Now there were two obvious things that we can do with offsets. We can do simple numerical computations and say the offset is this big or indeed the closed loop gain is this big. They're equivalent computations. Or we can show figures with key results and we are going to do both. Just a reminder then of how the offset is defined and we're only going to use a simple feedback loop. If you want to do slightly more involved loops then we're going to leave that to private study. Now the offset is defined as the difference between the output, here's the output y, and the target r. Now because we've got a summing junction, therefore the offset is this signal here, e. From earlier videos, you will know that e can be defined as follows. e is 1 over 1 plus gm times r. And the closed loop transfer function, y, comes from gm over 1 plus gm times r. We're going to look at both because the offset tells us how far away we are but equivalently we might just want to know where does the output get to. So finding the offset from the steady state gain. An earlier video showed that we could easily compute the steady state gain, that's a key thing, of a transfer function using bode.m and so we're going to use bode again. Now also from the final value theorem the steady state output of a transfer function when the input is a unit step is equal to the steady state gain of that transfer function. And therefore what do we get? Here's the equation for our offset signal. E equals 1 over 1 plus gm times 1 over s. So we're assuming that the target is 1 over s. And when you now apply the final value theorem and try to find the limit as t goes to infinity of e of t, you get this. It's GCE of 0, where GCE is the transit function 1 over 1 plus GM. Similarly, if we wanted to look at the output, there's the uh, output equation, y equals GM over 1 plus GM times 1 over s. And using the final value theorem, we find that that settles at GC of 0. And hence, you'll notice, because these are transfer functions evaluated at 0, we can use both. So, using the observations for unit target, that the steady state of the error is GCE of 0, the steady state of the output is GC of 0, a simple MATLAB code would be as follows. First, find the closed loop transfer function. So GCE from feedback, 1 comma G times K, that was covered in one of the earlier videos, and the closed loop transfer function for the output, feedback G times K, comma 1. And then simply substitute these transfer functions into Bode. So the steady state of the error is Bode GCE, comma 0, and the steady state for the output is Bode GC, comma 0. A final observation, just to check you've not made a silly mistake, is we expect the steady state output plus the steady state offset to be 1. Let's look at MATLAB then and see what happens. So what we're going to do Let's go up to the top here and we're going to enter a couple of transfer functions and do the uh, closed loop transfer function. So if you look at that code, you'll see what have we done. We've entered a transfer function for g. There it is 10 over s squared plus 5s plus 6. We've entered a transfer function for k. There it is, s plus 1 over s plus 2. We've calculated the closed loop transfer function for the error using feedback 1 comma g times k and we've calculated the transfer function for the output feedback g times k comma 1. So what we can do now is we can use these Bode statements to get the offsets. So here we go. So you can see E steady state is 0.5455 and Y steady state is 0.4545 and clearly if you put those two together you will get 1 which is what we expected. So that's a simple demonstration 
of the MATLAB code required in order to calculate the numeric values of either the offset or the steady state output. Now, for completeness, we've got a slightly different example here. And you'll notice the difference when you look at the values we've entered here. The most important difference is if you look at this K, this K here, you'll notice that instead of putting in a 1, 2, we've put in an integrator. And when there's an integrator, we expect the steady state error to be zero. So let's check then. Let's calculate the steady state error and the steady state output. And indeed, what do you notice? ESS is zero, YSS is one. And if you want to look at the closure of transfer functions just to confirm, that's what you expect. You'll notice the transfer function for the error has got no constant in the numerator, and hence the gain is zero. The transfer function, closure of transfer function for the output has got a plus one as the constant in the numerator and a plus one as the constant in the denominator. Because they match, the gain is one. Figures then. It might be that you want to plot the offset using a figure or by plotting E of T or Y of T or indeed both so you can see what's going on. And overlay the plots uses the same skills as we discussed in the step response video. So just a quick summary. This is what we can do. We can calculate the output response using Y comma T equals step GC. We can calculate the error at the corresponding times by putting the same t in, doing e equals step gce, comma t. We can use this plot command to overlay the output, the error. And if you're wondering what this funny bit is at the end, this does the target. OK, it basically plots a signal which has got a value of 1. And I've used a legend here to make sure that I can see which signal is which. And this final bit at the end sets the y-axis limits to be 0 to 1.2, so I can see what I'm interested in. So first of all, let's put the first example back in. So there's the first example, the G, the K, the G, C, E, and the G, C. And let's just calculate them. And now if we go down, and let's use these lines which we just showed and see what happens. Now, if you look at the figure we've just produced, you'll see the output is in red, the error is in blue, and the target of one is in green. And what do you notice? Well, the most important thing to notice is, of course, the output gets nowhere near to one, and it's got quite a big error. So that red double arrow is the offset, and clearly the offset curve is also given by this blue curve. So if you calculate that red arrow, you'll see it's the same as the blue curve. And just a reminder, red plus blue equals 1. So you can see the output curve in red and the offset curve in blue. Now, this is a very bad example. You are nowhere near the target. But the most important thing is you can see how easily you could overlay these plots using MATLAB and see what's going on. What about the second example then? So the second example, there it was. This is the second example which had the integrator. So we'll re-enter the numbers. And then we go to these bottom four lines which generate the plots. And what do you notice now? We need to uh, get rid of this writing. And what you'll see is the output has gone to 1 and the error has gone to 0. There is no offset as expected, because it had an integrator and it was closed loop stable. And again, you can see how easily you can use MATLAB to demonstrate what is going on. So in conclusion, the video has shown how you can get the steady state gain of the loop. And this can be used to find the steady state offset and or the steady state output, just using the bode command. We've assumed unit targets for convenience. And we've also demonstrated that you can easily display plots which illustrate what's going on, because this might be helpful.